So yes, hello, uh, Romford Film Festival is ongoing, as you all know, or it will be in a few days. It begins on Friday the 24th, going through to Tuesday the 29th or the 28th, I think it is. I'm getting lost on my days right now. But uh, on Sunday the 26th of May, 3pm to 5pm on Screen 7, we have a double bill a short movie called Big George, which we're going to be talking to the director, as you can see on the screen right now, and a feature film called It's Delirium something. I'm forgetting what the name of it is right now. That's terrible. Two seconds. It's about aliens. It's like Roswell Delirium. Roswell that was Delirium. it. Yeah, Roswell. Yeah. Which is a fantastic feature, by the way, so absolutely do check that out as well. But we're here to talk about Big George. I am with Jamie F. Ross, the director of this short movie. A great short movie that I can't wait to talk to you about. How are you today, though? I, I am doing pretty well today, man. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a, little, it's a little rainy and gray here in, uh, in New York City, but, uh, but, but we're managing. Oh man, New York. You, can you really complain if you're in New York though, can you? <laughs> I think you can always complain in New York, you know. I my 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 uh it's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place, but like my I have a, a, a little uh, logo that I've created that's um, I still need to make a t-shirt out of it that is the I Heart NY logo and it just underneath it says but it's complicated. Because yes. that is everyone's actual relationship to New York. It's uh, it. everyone's got a, a love hate relationship with the city. That's what makes it. <laughs> that's what that's what gives it its spice. It is. It is. I, I've only ever been to New York once, and I absolutely loved it. But I, I could see why you might not, or you might have a complicated relationship with it. Um, one thing that I love about doing these remote interviews, um, or the formal ones that I do when I'm at the at the air festival is that when I'm on the stage doing the Q&As, I don't necessarily have all the time in the world to dive a little bit deeper into some things. So one question I like to ask you on, on the remote interviews is more a case of um, tell us a little bit, if you if you don't mind, about your background and how you came into filmmaking and why the hell you would do it. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, well, it's uh, thankfully, it's kind of pertinent to the to the film itself in a lot of ways because I come from the performing side. I come from the acting side. I've been an actor uh, all my life and uh, here in New York for about 20 years, but I've also always written and directed a little bit for stage. I, you know, I've worn many hats and uh, I was kind of slowly but surely making that pivot towards directing and, and writing it being the, the larger part of of what I do, um, and and away from away from acting, but I I still was uh, making primarily my living off of that. I do a lot of, of voiceover and commercial work, and when the pandemic hit, um, all of us who did that kind of work, which is like to be a working actor in New York City, this is the type of work that you need to do just to stay alive. Um, and our social life disappeared when the pandemic hit because suddenly everything went remote and the the social aspect of what we do which is to see each other in audition rooms and around auditions um that just went away and that was for the most part the, those casting directors those other actors those technicians those agents whatever it is those are my coworkers, and so yeah. we kind of all lost our entire uh, our entire work culture um, because of it. And it was very clear mid pandemic that it wasn't going to come back. It was just it's too easy and too cost effective to do everything remotely. So part way through it, when I was really having a hard time. Uh, I just r reached out to all the casting directors I knew because I was like, hey, if this is bad for me, I can't imagine what it's like for you. Uh, we've got to figure out how to how to retain our community. Uh, and so what we what I what, what I th the first idea was just like, well, let's have a happy hour when it's safe enough to do it um, and get people together who are in the business and uh, who, you know, we're used to to connecting on that level 
And so we did it. And the very first one, um, my good friend, Jake Hart, who is in the movie, who plays <laughs> Hank, Big George, um, he was there and we've been wanting to, to make something together for a very long time. And another friend was there who had never met him before, but uh, at one point, and couldn't remember his name, at one point he came up to me and he's like, Who, who's your buddy over there, Big, Big George, Big George Clooney? Over there. <laughs> And the, 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 it always been a joke that, that uh, Jake looks like uh, George Clooney. I mean, like he's got, he, he gets that a bunch and he's done a little bit of parody stuff, but it was just, it just clicked. And so the, so the idea for the, for the film came out of that meeting, that, that time of getting people back in rooms together to actually be able to have those sparks, have the opportunity for that stuff to happen. Mm. So um, it really was about trying to retain that community. And so we wanted to we wanted to make a, a film that was in many ways about us, that was about a um, that was about someone who was an artist in the middle of their career who uh, who is struggling with the questions of whether this is worth it all the time, you know, mm-hmm. who has is trying to balance their life against this passion that they have and 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 has to ask that is it worth it question all the time and just for context the film is about um (laughs) a a middle-aged actor who's made his living as a george clooney impersonator who uh gains too much weight over the pandemic and he gets dropped by his agent and he's spending the day with his nine-year-old daughter trying to justify to her but really to himself, uh, why he's still living this dream of being an actor. And uh, yeah, that's that's really that's really where it came from. I will, I will say that I'm, I'm a little bit upset by the fact that he's not actually a George Clooney impersonator. <laughs> but, but the resemblance, wow. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty uncanny. I mean, like, you know, his joke, not mine, is always yeah. when someone comes up to him and says, and it says, uh, hey, does anyone tell you you look like George Clooney? He, he goes, you know, like I ate George Clooney. And, <laughs> and I wouldn't make that joke if it wasn't the joke that he made. No, no, I get it. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's gotten it for, for a long time. And, and you know, we, we clooneyed him up a little bit more for this movie too. Or mm. he, 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 he clooneyed himself. He, he did some you know, some deep Clooney work to get there. <laughs> and, and I think um, one of the things that I particularly loved uh, about Big George, about your short, is the fact that being a film festival that's on the other side of the pandemic now, we got a ton of lockdown movies, a ton of pandemic movies, and your movie comes on and it's a Zoom call, and I'm like, oh, it's another one of them. But then it becomes this story about what you did on the other side of it. And I absolutely just, I was thrilled to see. And then when I read about the happy hour that you just mentioned as well, is like, oh man, like, that's what they actually did. Like, this, like, it's so cool to see. But how important was it for you and, and I guess Jake and everyone else involved that you, that you got that right, that you got that sense right and the theme right? Well, I mean, first, I, I have to I have to mention that that the whole thing with having the Zoom call at the top was such a risk that I didn't realize was a risk until a little further down the line when oh, I was absolutely people who were like talking about programs. I'm like, they're gonna turn it off. They're gonna see this of Zoom call. And they're gonna be like, oh god, no, not another one. I can't <laughs> deal with. It. And I I honestly I, I, I get that because I've seen enough myself. I've seen enough mm. of, of these of the Zoom pandemic thing. So I, I appreciate you and I appreciate anyone who sort of got past it. But I but I wonder how how that um how that may have um, hamstrung us in the selection process in in, in other places. Um, but obviously we only get the, the quality people who pay attention. <laughs> Um, I mean, for, for, for me, yeah, quick, quickly, quickly, and then we'll get back to you there. Um, for me, it's a case of like, okay, you're going to do this. Um, show me how you're going to make it interesting, and and mm. that's that's what keeps me invested with it. And 
and you absolutely smashed it on that front. So yes, yeah, but carry on. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that benefit of the doubt. Um, and um, it, as far as getting as far as getting it right, you know, thank you. I'm glad that it um, that it that it spoke to you. That the rightness of it spoke to you. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the only way you get anything right is by having it be authentic. And this was just very authentic. This was just very felt. This is very, this is, this is what we do and who we are. I mean, uh, we have all been in this position of, of having to ask these questions of doing these ridiculous gigs w one way or another, just to stay solvent, you know, yeah. and none of which are fulfilling so that we can hopefully do that one thing that is fulfilling enough that buoys you for the next bit of time so that, you, you know, so that you can, so that you can get to the next one, you know, mm. and, um, so I, yeah, I think that, I think that it's just like anything the the rightness of it comes because it's truthful and it's, and, and part of that truth, uh, and part of that rightness came out of the fact that like, I wrote this for Jake and his real life daughter. Um, you know, Beatrix is his daughter and she's, they're also fantastic in the film yeah. and the funny thing is that she she's had some success, but she doesn't want to be an actor. No, no. And that's the perfect dynamic between these two characters. Yeah, because her whole thing is consistently kind of asking this question of like, why do you want to do this? <laughs> and Beatrix in in real life is definitely got to the point, even even though she's she's honestly got some some better credits than most of us have um a, she just got to the point where she's like i don't this is i don't want to do this yeah boring <laughs> <laughs> sitting, sitting, around. <laughs> Which sitting, around, sitting around all day waiting for people to set cameras what am i doing with my life <laughs> exactly 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 um but, but yeah. you you're all, you are right you're 100 percent right because yes this is a movie about a middle-aged man who's trying to get through his uh, working career and, and get that part but it's also a big part of it is the relationship with the father and the daughter which is what sang to me i'm a father i've got three girls um so straight away this relationship just just yeah hits me in all sorts of places mm -hmm. but like but how how and i know it's his daughter but she's kind of giving him crap the whole way through and, and he's kind of having to like eat that shitty sandwich all the way through this show and and how was that like for them two to play off or was it just a natural kind of vibe on set kind of i i think it really was a natural vibe it you know it wasn't until much later that i was that i was uh watching cuts and and being like oh man she's so mean yeah yeah she can be <laughs> but but uh, the but that's but but that was kind of part of the writing process was that you can get away with that with kids because they just say the mean stuff especially to you you know what i yeah. mean like they they're not trying to be mean they're just being honest yeah um it's just without any sort of uh preconceived social grace or anything about it and i think that Jake and and Beatrix like to like to play and like to rib each other like that, and so um, I think that it was it was totally natural. The and any time that it wasn't natural, not necessarily like the 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 meanness of it or any or anything like that, but any time that the, that the dynamic wasn't natural. It was only because of the language so i just told them to change it you know what i mean yeah. like there's one there's one amazing uh moment in the at the near the end of the film where um jake is in they're in the car together he's about to drop her off at her mom's house and he has this sort of speech about what what acting can be and what what make believe can be and how powerful it can be and the the way that I had originally written it, I think it was like it was a little too heady. It was a it was right. a language was a little too highfalutin. 
And <laughs> Beatrix just turns to me and goes, who talks to a child like this? <laughs> and I was like, fair enough. Okay. We're going to, we're going we're gonna to shift that. We're going to. And so they started workshopping it like on the spot until there was something that was true to their t- style of interaction that still had most still had most of the meat there it was just in their language and i think that that's incredibly important and it's something that i'm i'm uh, i've been doing with with work the work that i'm that i've been doing recently is that is that if i've got a main character especially i will i i know that that they're at the end going to be credited as an additional writing by you know because i'm i'm just like i'm not I'm much more com- coming at, at this from the acting side. Yeah. I'm so much more invested in the characters than the exact words that they're saying. That's it's not it's not as important. What's important to me is that that, that the character is authentic to them, so that hopefully it will it will ring true to us. And so I'm I'm fully uh, I'm fully here for that sort of collaboration. That's 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 really quite refreshing to hear as well because sometimes like when you when you speak to directors and, I, and i'm not going to name any names they they get super super precious about the material and don't really want the actors going off on one and it's sort of like well well dude that's maybe why that character didn't didn't fly as well as it should have and and that's something that absolutely shows in your show is the fact that you've clearly let them do like as you say play and and get what they need to get and that shows in absolutely my favorite scene of the whole shot. And, and I'm not I'm not gonna try to spoil anything, but it's the cafe scene. And it's when the woman comes over and gives Beatrix her, her phone. Mm-hmm. And that's my favorite scene because my kids do that to me constantly. <laughs> and and I love that moment and it also it speaks to yeah she's been giving him shit the whole time but you know what in that scene she shows you just how much she actually loves her dad she's she's on his side yeah yeah the whole they're, time they're a unit. it doesn't it doesn't matter and like and like she can give she can give him shit but if someone else starts giving shit oh yeah i'm sorry what oh mm-hmm. yeah absolutely mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I got to say, regardless of, I have to give Beatrix credit because regardless of like uh, the, 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 the few times that, that they, that they played a little bit um, or that, that we decided that was the right, right place for them to do it. She was basically word perfect on the script. Yeah. Like there's, 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 there's that one very long walking shot down the street which is an entire scene is the most n- amount of words in a scene yeah. and it doesn't stop it's a it's a one shot it's a single shot and yeah. and she didn't she didn't flub a word on on that and we didn't have that many takes of it really because we couldn't lock up a street in new york as you will clearly see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so i've told you a little bit about kind of what what i took away from the movie but um what what What's the hope from from you as the director, as the creator? What what's the hope from you that people come out of this movie with? I, you know, I hope it's a film that we can all see ourselves in a little bit, and that um, that no matter what you do, you, you're always asking a question of, of, of what am I doing? <laughs> that adulthood is a bit of a myth, and that. Um, uh, if you're trying to follow a passion of any kind, you're always going to be bumping up against these questions. And, um, and sometimes, sometimes just staying the course against all odds isn't the answer. Sometimes, sometimes there are things that are more important. Sometimes what you get from your family is, is actually far more enriching than, what your idea of the thing that you wanted to do when you were a younger person is or was, um, you know, I, I think 
I think that um, I think that what I would like people to take away from it is that sense of um, we see the stories that we see about artists tend to be these ones of a meteoric rise or a meteoric fall. We see someone at the bottom or someone at the top. Yeah. We don't see the big weird middle. And that's where most of us live. Most of our lives are this strange amalgam of weird jobs and twists and turns. And there's no ladder to it. And I don't think that's just with artists either. I think that that's, that's, that's many people's lives who are trying to, trying to live authentically to, to something that, that, um, that they're passionate about um, or trying to find it. Yeah. And I wanted to I wanted to show that that big weird middle space and 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 give it some give it some air um mm -hmm. and hopefully have people inspired enough that they see themselves in it and they and they and they're like yeah hey that's me and they and they come and and find me and then we make stuff together you know that's come, like come and find you and and go and be a surly pirate that's right. Come <laughs> find me and be a be a, be an excited sea captain. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and that, and that's what you hope that people can take away from it, obviously. But where when I speak to creators and directors and actors and everything like that, and they see their movies up on the big screen, they will tell me absolutely everything that's wrong with it. They they can tell me where the boom mic was, where the shot wasn't, uh, should have been cut earlier. The sound's not quite right, but question i like to ask is when you do see it up there with audiences what are you is there a particular scene that you're most proud of that it was a tricky day but you know what we got it in the bag and we nailed it huh well i'll tell you the trickiest day by far was the the last day where we are shooting that scene where she gets out of the car and she goes to uh, when he's dropping her off at her mom's house mm. before he drives back um, to his his own apartment, and um, the we were chasing the light in that in that scene. We're shooting it across the street from where Jake and Beatrix live <laughs> in, in New Jersey, and. I knew that this was going to be the, the most difficult thing to pull off just because we're, we're chasing the sun as the sun is going down and um, we're behind and we're trying to pull off these shots so that we can, because it, it, if it gets dark, it's we're, our continuity is going to be blown and uh, the cops come. <laughs> A, a a very problematic neighbor called the cops on us for a, a noise complaint or some some silly thing and me and the producers are just like we'll we'll show you what we're doing if you just stand off here to the side and and, and we yeah. can just let us do this and as we were doing that beatrix who had got freaked out and thought we were all getting arrested she shut her hand in the car door Ooh. pretty badly and so first she thought she was so there's this blood curdling scream and the cops are like what's happening and we're like i don't know and jake is running over to get his daughter who's wailing and he's picked her up and he's carrying her into the house and she's screaming about having to have her hand cut off <laughs> and it was it was and i was like oh that's the day that's it <laughs> We've, we've lost the rest of this day. We're going to have to figure out how to do this. But <clears throat> Beatrix, Beatrix's mom, Virginia, um, she sort of pep talked her into getting out there and finishing the scene. So with a little bit of color correction magic, uh, it is it is definitely dark, but we've made it brighter um, at that the very end um uh just when they say goodbye at the door and the the scene just works it's very simple and heartfelt and there's a lovely little gesture between the, the, the between jake and his his ex in the in the film um and it was really <clears throat> it was really all we needed 
the thing that we lost in that was, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we had planned for a, a, a drone shot <laughs> at the end, actually, as his car drives away down the hill to sort of stay on the car and rise over this tree. And you'd see the New York skyline in the background as if he's going back sort of towards the dream. But at the end of the day, I, I was always iffy on it because drone shots for me, I'm you gotta have a really good reason. Otherwise it's just like production quality because we yeah. did <clears throat> um, But like, uh, I, at the end of the day, it's it's a really small, it's a small and intimate film. We don't need that sense of scale to it. Like that's not where, um, you know, who knows what it would have done if, if we had had it in, but I, I sure don't miss it not you know not being there i don't think it's i don't think it's really needed but yeah honestly when i see this thing on the big screen I, yeah we have this fantastic uh dp named gabe harden who i'm working with on several projects now and the film just looks really great it's like i you know we we we're, we're super proud of it and like when we when we when we watch it on like not to toot my own horn but like when we watch it on a big screen you're like ah oh, this is how you're supposed to watch this yeah I actually see so much more i'm actually getting so much more information between the micro expressions between just the 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 sheer um fact of the size you are more immersed in it mm -hmm. and when it's all around you 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 just buy it more and it's so different than watching on a small screen um so i'm i i just i i love it also i i have uh my me and my producers are all extremely anal retentive so there's definitely no booms <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see any so <laughs> Not, 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 not on this one. We, we, we'll, we'll, we see maybe tiny, teeny mistakes here and there, but, but, um, no, we were, we were really, really excited for how it all came out. So, so with that said, um, what is next for Big George? Um, in terms of you're on the festival run right now, and um, where are people going to be able to see it? How are they going to be able to see it after the festival run? And I guess the most important question, which I feel like I already know the answer to, is would you ever blow this up a little bit and see further adventures of, of Hank? Yeah, uh, I, the, the, the answer to the first question is like, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> you know, short films are uh, super weird and don't usually have much of a, of a runway or, or a lifetime. Um, and um, we're doing, we're, we're continuing the festival circuit through the year. Um, and we're, we're having a good time doing that. And we're meeting people and seeing, uh, and we're open to, we're open to ideas and we're open to uh, folks who uh, may want to see it go somewhere. And yeah, one of those ideas, is to expand it in um and we've got ideas for expanding it either into episodic or to into a feature because it, it would be really really fun to get into the the world of impersonators which is its mm -hmm. own world you know to go to some of these like impersonator conventions and you, we could really get a bunch of very very fun characters going oh, yeah. um, in in that world um and also just in the the working actor world in in general which isn't something that 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 i feel like we've we've seen much of um not at least not in a not in this kind of uh of a tone and a format i mean we see a more cartoony sort of styles of it like yeah. large broader comedy kind of stuff but um so yeah, we can see it going. It we're, we're leaving our options open. So if anyone wants to talk about it, <laughs> and, getting... uh, and 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 what's next for for Jamie? Um, that's that's George. But what are you working on? Can you tell us anything else that you're working on? And yeah, are we that's... gonna are we gonna see the casting director cameo again? <laughs> you know, I um, <laughs> I. 
I cast myself in in a few different pieces in the past, and I and I was um, I had a, a movie that came out in 2022 called um, Give or Take, and I play the main character in it, and I co-wrote it. I did not direct it because okay. that's insane. And but what I've learned from making things where I I have worn that many hats, even just the writing and producing and acting is I'm never putting I'm only going to be putting myself into smaller roles from here on, here on out if at all because you just never do anything as well as you could if you had if you were bringing your full self to it you yeah. you are you are dividing your energy and you're just not going to do any of those things to to your to your fullest capabilities um so the next piece the we the crew on this on Big George just gelled so beautifully and so quickly that we um, everyone was just like, "What's next?" And so it was during the strikes. Short film agreements were not on the table for 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 the uh, for the for the strikes, and so they it was fair game to do anything that was under fifty thousand dollars. And so we, I, I just was like. I'll tell you. And I had a concept for a, a psychological thriller uh, that I wanted to that I wanted to shoot. It's a proof of concept for a feature. And so we went up into the woods of Maine with damn near the exact same crew, and we shot this uh, 20 minute psychological thriller uh, called The Photographer about a woman who is solo camping in 1999 and has one of the very first digital cameras with her. And after her first night alone in the woods, she looks back at the pictures, and there's pictures of her sleeping in the tent. Oh. And she gets lost, and then the longer she's out there, the more pictures are appearing, and it begins to be obvious that the pictures are not only of what has happened, they're of what's about to happen to her. Wow. So uh, descent into uh, the self doubt and madness there, but it looks incredible. It we I made it with this it, an old friend and amazing performer named Sarah Ellen Stevens, who's just waiting to to uh, to blow up. And uh, yeah, and we're just we're we're gonna have a friends and family screening of that next month here in New York. And then hopefully that that either either we go into festival circuit on a really targeted basis with that one, or we hopefully just try to find some independent investment bef like beforehand and then blow up the rest of the feature, like pull, like like shoot the rest of it, and then bring the feature to to festivals. Well, you've got me sold already. So. <laughs> <laughs> As long as as long as the uh, the pictures are being taken by Hank, <laughs> but no, no, no. Um, I I do have one last question. But first of all, um, please everybody who gets down to the festival, Rumford Film Festival again, it kicks off next Friday, um, the twenty fourth of May, right through to the Tuesday the twenty ninth, uh, Sunday the twenty sixth though, May May three pm till five pm on screen seven absolutely go and see big george and the alien movie which again for some reason the title's just roswell delirium roswell uh, go go and check out both those movies but most importantly check out big george because yes. it's a fantastic shot and i do think people will get a nice little it's relatable is is what i would like to say and i, I think most people especially the people at the festival which is mostly filmmakers will get something from it so please do go and do all that thank you but jamie one last question and, it, and it's the old desert island question oh. so you're on a desert island you've only got one movie for the rest of your life to watch however my particular twist the nerdly twist on this question is that whatever that movie is it has to be a remake version of that movie made by you oh ho, ho. <laughs> so i'm watching my own movie it's your own version yeah. of someone else's movie 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to twist this just slightly because oh. there is a remake because this is the movie that I want to want to make, mm -hmm. and it's it's not gonna really um, it's not really gonna count as a remake, but it has been okay. Do you know the the <laughs> the um, uh, there's a Cor the Cormac McCarthy novel, uh, All the Pretty Horses. Yes. Okay. So that was made into a movie mm. that w that is the most non Cormac McCarthy movie that you can possibly imagine. I think it's it's, it's a young um, Matt Damon, mm. and it's a and it's a it's a, it's like it's a ro it's a romance, and it's terrible. Um, <laughs> but I desperately want to make that movie again. And I want to do it. Uh, I want to do it in a way that 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 um, uh, you know does justice to McCarthy's writing, um, because I think that it's it's actually w one of the it's one of the best narratives about the American West and 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 sort of a a really simple kind of terse um metaphor for uh, for america in in general and um and horses are uh, uh incredible mythical creatures so i think I, I i would love to watch a movie that had a lot of horses and grit and american <laughs> west in them i think i could do that i think i could i think i could rock that so this is a good question though and i'm like gonna kick myself and i'm gonna think of like six other things that i wish i should <laughs> <laughs> but as that's, far as remakes go, yeah, that's 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 a it's a great answer to be honest. And and Cormac McCarthy, I mean, it's I, f I feel like it's just hard to do justice to his work most of the time. Um, well, but you yeah. are right; all the pretty horses is is pretty poor to be. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, look, I mean, think about. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Think about the road. Yeah. These, are, these are movies. This this works. It does work when you when you re, when you go deep on it. It works. Mm. It's not necessarily <laughs> going to be a feel good film. I may not I may not live very long on that desert island. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it goes. <laughs> well, well. Thank you so much, Jamie, for your time tonight. Thank you for doing this for me. And uh, this will go out to the the ether, and I'll let you know when it does. But um, again, just just let people know where they can find you uh, on on social media or whatever, um, where they can find Big George, and then we'll round it out there. Yeah, sure. Uh, the best way is on Instagram to check out um, at Big George Film on Instagram. Uh, you can also look me up. My my handle is Nun Trick Pony N O N E T R I C K P O N Y, uh, which is also the name of my uh, production company. Um, yeah, that's how how you can find me. And and I have to say, listen, if you've made it this far through me prattling on, I <laughs> absolutely salute you. Uh, you. You should definitely you should definitely get in touch. And thank you so much, man. This was a, this was a lot of fun.